All right, back for another beer review, and today I'll be reviewing yet another beer from Energy City Brewing, and they are out of Batavia, Illinois. And this is their Bistro, the grape, peanut butter, and jelly variant. So they are calling this one a Berliner style Weiss beer with Concord grapes, peanut butter, and natural flavor. Comes in at 6.5% alcohol by volume. No IVs listed in time of review. This can is just under four months old. I want to give a huge thanks and shout out once again to a friend of mine and a viewer of the channel, Clayton, for hooking me up with this one. So big thanks to him for this beer. In the description box, I'll post a link to the beer mailboxing video I did. Thank thanks all the goodies he hooked me up with. And I want to apologize to Clayton because he sent me this one. It was probably about probably about two months old and the uh, channel went on hi hiatus for about a month and I wasn't drinking beer for almost two months. So what happened was this got kind of put to the back of the fridge. Now with a style like this, I don't think the age will matter as much, but uh, I'm really excited about this one, but I do apologize to Clayton because I did not get to it in ample time in my opinion. So I am very sorry, Clayton. Hopefully it's still delicious. So Energy City, I've had one beer from them. Uh, it was their Bistro, um, Bistro Cabana it was their pink guava and pineapple sent to me by another good friend of mine, a viewer of the channel, uh, Kenny. And that was just basically like carbonated pink guava puree. It was good, but a little bit much, very tart, very acidic, very uh, one dimensional. Uh, I think I gave it like a 3.9. Was it, uh, you know, my favorite heavily fruited uh, sour ale, but it was still pretty solid in general. Um, but when it comes to Energy City, I've heard so many good things about them. And now, right after Clayton sent me this beer, we started getting distro of some of their stuff. I know a lot of other people out there too have started to get uh, distro of Energy City. So I picked up their Bistro Crumble. I think it was one of the berry uh, variants. And then I picked up their Bistro Pineapple Coconut Cream Pie. So I'll be reviewing those over the next couple months, but I wanted to start with one, the one um, Clayton sent my way because it's older and on top of that, I should, I should, I should, and I am. And honestly, this sounds delicious. I've only had a couple peanut butter and jelly, like heavily fruited sours. They've been good. Um, a lot of times it's weird because I feel like I should be eating it as opposed to drinking it. So hopefully that's not the case here and that I just love drinking it. So let's give it a pour here, see what we got going on. So yeah, you know, it has the puree look to it. We've got this big glass that I can pour, I think, most of it in. We'll see. I don't want to go too crazy. Yeah, we should be able to fit all of it. So, peanut butter jelly, indeed. I'm going to... Yeah, that's fucking weird. Okay, so, as you can see, that has this crazy deep purple color. Um, yeah, super murky, turbid, can't see through it. Uh, tons of puree being used here. Uh, had about a finger of an off, like, purple into pink colored head. Now has remnants from the fruit puree, the pectin, whatever you want to call it. Has no head as we speak, but that looks like something that would have Concord grapes in it for sure. Let's get a nose. <laughs> oh, man. Here's the thing. Joe, here we go. Starting to talk. I'm on. Oh, is it beer? Is it not? I'm not going to have this discussion here. Listen, I always say this in all these reviews. These are beer, but they're not. I mean, they, they, they're definitely the base is a Berliner Weiss, but like a lot of people argue you should just, you know, make a seltzer or something like that. Shouldn't be beer. And I get it. When I smell this in no way, shape or form does this smell like fucking beer. This smells like somebody took a legit peanut butter and jelly sandwich with uh, grape jelly and or grape jam and threw it into a blender and you're drinking the smoothie remnants of that. The peanut butter smells like an like an actual peanut butter on bread. It has that bready like dough kind of component in addition to the peanut butter. And on top of that, you get the sweet, uh, jammy, jelly like grape uh, Concord grape. Just... There's maybe a slight tartness to the nose, but for the most part, like it's fucking wild. Now it's not as wild anymore because when these heavily fruited smoothie slushy sours popped off like two to three years ago. Um, you know, people are, their minds were blown, but now a lot of people have local breweries doing something just like this. I mean, we, here in the West New York area, we have Froth, uh, we have Mortalis, we have Fifth Frame, we have places doing that. So, you know, it's not as a surprise when you smell something like this. I've smelled peanut butter and jelly sour ales, which sounds stupid in, in, in just in general, but it's not as big of a, a mind fuck as it was, say, two or three years ago, but it still fucks my mind up. It's like I shouldn't. I shouldn't be smelling these characteristics in a beer or in a drink. I should be smelling them as I'm making a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. So my, my brain is trying to process what's happening and struggling mightily. Anyway, it smells exactly like I thought it would or I'd hope it would. Uh, yeah, let's get into it. Cheers, everybody. Thanks again, Clayton.
Yeah. There's no surprises here. So first things first, the body, it's not super thick. This is not like full body. It's not like syrup. It's just like higher side of medium, lower side of full. It has a thickness to it for something six and a half percent. But I've had, you know, some of the smoothie and slushy sours that are just like, you know, it's like drinking like actual just straight puree. This has remnants of that, but not exactly to that level. There's a nice slight moderate like carbonation, but it, it does it does fade away quickly because you get it at the front of the palate and then by the back it kind of smooths out. So body and mouthfeel are nice. It's kind of what I expected. The taste, it is what it is. I will say this, the peanut butter character in the nose didn't translate 100%. I feel like the nose was straight on real peanut butter. The taste is more of like roasted peanuts, but still sweeter roasted peanuts. So almost like a natural, like chunky peanut butter as opposed to a smooth peanut butter. Right at the forefront, I'm hit with that sweet Concord grape, just a sweet grape in general. And right after that, that chunky peanut butter hits and it's more roasted than, than sweet. There's an underlying dough slash bready component that again is giving me peanut butter and jelly and an actual sandwich vibes, which is really cool. It finishes sweet, but not, this is not sickly sweet. I'm gonna be able to drink the rest of this at the end of it. I'm gonna be like, oh man, that's like too sweet. But I will say that I was hoping for a little bit more of a, a tartness. I don't want it to be super sour and like crazy acidic because that's where heartburn kicks in for me. And that's where sometimes it's hard to finish. But I think I want a little bit more tartness because this is a Berliner Weiss and it should be tart. And there's a slight tartness here. There's even almost like a salinity like, like from the peanuts, like a saltiness from the peanuts too. Almost like this is more of a gozen than a Berliner Weiss from what I'm drinking. But it works really well. Is it amazing? It's not amazing to me, but I mean, for what they're going for, a great peanut butter and jelly Berliner Weiss, this is like four, seven, five out of five because they've come damn close. I think if the peanut butter character in the nose carried over the taste and there was a little bit more tartness, it'd be a five out of five for what they're going for. Have to, you know, throw in personal preference. That's how I rate. And I would say, <sighs> fucking really good. Like it's really good. So uh, Bistro, grape, a peanut butter and jelly, um, from Energy City or Bistro, the grape peanut butter and jelly variant uh, from Energy City. I have no problems giving this beer a high 4.25 out of 5. I'm going 4.35 out of 5. Almost gets in the low 4.5 range. It's really good. It really is. I think to get into the 4.5 range for me, pretty much what I said to get higher for what they're going for, I would like that peanut butter character to be more of a creamy peanut butter and less of a chunk. I love chunky peanut butter, like I do, but I think with a, in sandwich form, like, I like creamy peanut butter more with like jam or jelly as opposed to chunky. So I think for me, I would want a little less roastiness in the taste from the peanut butter and a little bit more tartness. And this would definitely get in a four or five as it, excuse me, as it stands, it's really good. So uh, 4.35 out of five for this beer. And it's a pretty damn good score, I think. Uh, price and availability, I don't know. So Clayton, chime in what you paid for a four pack of this, which I, or a single can or whatever. Energy City that showed up here, typically, their beers, for what I paid locally here, are in the Froth and Mortalis range. I think they were $25 or $26 a four-pack. A lot of people just are like, I'm not paying that, and I get it. Uh, everything's expensive nowadays, not, not just beer, and it's hard to justify, you know, six six fifty a can. So I bought a couple of them because, again, they showed up here, so I was like, I'll pick up a can. I don't think I'd buy a four-pack because that's just too much. But um, I don't think locally these things are all that expensive. I think Kenny said, like, the Bistro Cabana was like 18 or 19 bucks a four-pack. If this is less than 20 bucks a four pack in Chicago or maybe just in Illinois in, in general, like, yeah, get them because most of them are $25 to four, uh, $25 four pack. Or you'd be like 450 North and get them out to Distro and then, you know, they're 10 to 12 bucks a can in my area, which I would never pay. So, anyway, uh, Distro, like I said earlier, we're starting to get out there. So, uh, again, we have some uh, Energy City stuff here locally, and I got a couple more I'm going to review, and I can't wait to get them soon. Uh, this is definitely better than the Bistro Combat, the, 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 the Pink Guava and Pineapple one. Um, I like this uh, quite a bit more. It works. The flavors work well. And I uh, think, thank, thank, uh, thank, I think, Clayton, I'm so, like, upset that I didn't get to this one earlier, or the uh, Who Done Slash Mystery Beer you, you gave me to, uh, you know, do a group review with Cal over at Hype and Sean and Mike over at NerdSense, but... We're going to get through all the beers here in the near future. 
and I'm happy I finally opened this one up. So huge thanks to you, Clayton, for this beer. Thanks to everybody uh, stopping by for another beer review here on the Beer Patrol. 6.5%, and with most of these beers, you can't even taste it. And a lot of people will say because there is no ABV in there, and maybe they're right. But yeah, you can't taste any alcohol in here. It's, uh, it's voodoo. So thanks to Clayton. Thanks to everybody stopping by for another beer review here on the Beer Patrol. Till the next one. Cheers.